Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve a quadratic using the square root method. Now, basically, the square root method is just like using inverse operations, but we're obviously going to be using the square root. And that's really important because you can see in each of these uh, examples, we only have one variable x, but in each time that x is squared. So by applying our inverse operations, we're first going to want to isolate the variable and then apply the square root. Now, what's important about quadratics is if we remember from looking at the graphs of quadratics, they could either have one solution, two solutions, or no solutions. Now, for these problems, we're going to focus on having two solutions. And I'll show you how using the quadratic, that makes sense. I'll also kind of give you an example of, no, of one solution as well as no solutions and kind of see where that, but see how those relate. But for this video, we're just going to focus on the two solutions case using the square root method. So again, using the square root method, again, as I mentioned, we're going to want to use inverse operations. And basically what we're doing is since we only have one variable, we can isolate that variable. And we want to isolate using the reverse order of operations as well as our inverse operations and the properties of equality. Oh, I was wondering why that didn't make sense. He's got to equal 0. OK, so in the first example here, we have x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. Well, to isolate the variable, we need to um, add a 4 to the other side. So I'm just going to add a 4 using my properties, addition property of equality. And then I have x squared is equal to 4. All right. Well, now I need to, again, we want to solve for x, not x squared. So we have to undo um, squaring, which would be the square root. So when I take the square root of both sides, I have x equals plus or minus 2. And this is one of the most common mistakes students have, is they always, they a lot of times just refer to the positive root. But remember, positive 2 times positive 2 equals 4, and negative 2 times negative 2 equals 4. So the square root of positive 4 is going to be plus or minus 2. We always need to make sure that we include the positive and the negative. And therefore, that shows us that we have our two-solution case. In the next example, we have x squared minus 5 equals 0. So just like the first example, we're going to use our addition property of equality. And therefore, I'll have x squared is equal to 5. Now, again, to get the square root, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And what I obtain is uh, x is equal to, now we have an issue here. Well, the square root of 4 was plus or minus 2, right? But what's the square root of 5? Well, since we can't take the square root of 5, because if you look at it, we have, we, let's see, we know the square root of 1, we know the square root of 4, and we know the square root of 9. Square root of, square root of 1 is 1, square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 9 is 3. So therefore, the square root of 5 is going to be some decimal between 2 and 3. But since it's not going to leave us with an integer, we're just going to leave it as the square root of 5. So my final answer, I'm just going to leave as plus or minus the square root of 5. And I actually did um, misspeak earlier. We actually are going to investigate a little bit of having a no solution. So in this example, you can see on these first two, it was x squared minus a number. Well, this next one, it's x squared plus a number. So by using our inverse operations, I'm going to subtract the 3 on both sides. And I will obtain x squared is equal to a negative 3. Now, again, to use my square root, I'm going to try to take the square root of a negative number. But the unfortunate thing is we can't take the square root of a number. Because the reason why we can take the square root is here, because you know, what number multiplied by itself gives you 4? Well, 2 times 2 gives you 4. Or uh, I guess I should write plus or minus, right? Or negative 2 times negative 2 equals 4. But there's no number that you can multiply by itself that gives you a negative number. Now, Further into this course, we're going to investigate into i, and that's what I'm going to do with this problem. However, um, a lot of times before you get into complex numbers or imaginary numbers, we would just write no solution. All right, And what that means is that the graph is not going to cross the x-axis. Um, but if we want to look into using it with complex numbers, we just write x equals. We're going to rewrite this as a square root of 3 times the square root of negative 1 because 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And then we replace negative uh, ne square root of negative 1 with i. So the final answer would still be, I'm sorry, should actually include still plus or minus, but it's going to be plus or minus. And we replace the square root of negative 1 with i, and then times the square root of 3. And again, if you haven't gotten the complex numbers, we get to that at the end of this course. Um, but I wanted to at least show you what we could do. If you haven't talked about imaginary numbers, you could just write no solution. But once we get into imaginary and complex numbers, we use i to represent the square root of a negative number. OK. So in the next case, uh, in the next three examples, we're going to get a little bit more uh, operations here. So in the first one, um, we now we have two operations that happen to my variable x. It's being subtracted by 32, and it's being at and multiplied by 2. Well, using the reverse order of operations, we always want to undo addition and subtraction first. 
So I'll add a 32 first. And then I'm left with 2x squared equals 32. Now, what I need to do is um, I see that my x squared is multiplied by 2, so I'm going to divide by 2. And I get x squared equals 16. Well, fortunately for us, x squared is, or 16 is a square number. So when I take the square root of both sides, I get x equals plus or minus 4. Again, remember that plus or minus. Very, very important. OK. Um, the next one. Here I have 3x squared minus 60 equals 0. And what, again, I'm going to do is follow the same operations. So I'm going to have plus 60. Oh, was that what I wanted to do? No. Yes. Oh. That doesn't really make sense. 5, 6 over 1. I'm going to change this problem, actually. Yes, I am sorry. Let's do 3. I actually used 2. That's fine. Sorry about that. I'm going to change this problem. OK, in the next one, so therefore I have 3x squared equals 60. Now I divide by 3. And I have x squared equals 60 divided by 3 is going to be 20. Now, when I take the square root, I can't take the square root of 20, just like I couldn't take the square root of 5. However, I can break up the number 20 into a, um, being into a product of a square number, which would be 4. So I could rewrite this as x equals plus or minus the square root of 4 times 5. And this is important. This is, comes into our simplifying radicals. And the reason why this is important is because I can now simplify the square root of 4, but I cannot simplify the square root of 5, just like we've proved with this. So therefore, my final answer is x equals plus or minus 2 square root of 5. And that would be our simplified radical. OK, in the last example, I'll still show you, the, I'll still show you what, the, um, what I originally wrote up there, just so you guys can see. But let's kind of go through this one again. Um, so I add 15 to both sides. 2x squared equals 15. Divide by 2, divide by 2. x squared equals 15. Oops x squared equals 15 divided by 2. Uh, now we have a fraction. Not very fun, right? So I'm gonna still going to take the square root. Now, obviously, we know 15 over 2 is not going to be a square number. But using, our, um, using some operations of radicals, what we can do is we can break this up into x equals plus or minus the square root of 15 over the square root of 2. Okay. So when we have the square root of a fraction, we can break that up into the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. And that's important because a lot of times in simplifying radicals, we want to rationalize the denominator. So to do that, what we're going to do is multiply by the square root of 2 on the top and the bottom. Well, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is going to be the square root of 4, which is just 2. And the square root of 15 times the square root of 2 is going to be the square root of 30. So therefore, my final answer is x equals plus or minus the square root of 30 over 2. Okay. Now, real quick, let's just see what would happen if I have 1 half x squared minus 15 equals 0. I would add 15 to both sides. 1 half x squared equals 15. Now, I'm multiplying my x squared by 1 half. So the best thing to do would be multiplying by the reciprocal, 2 over 1, which is really just 2. So therefore, I'd have x squared equals 30. 30 is not a square number, nor is there a square number that divides into 30. So my final answer would be x equals plus or minus the square root of 30. So. We talked about having two solutions as plus or minus. We talked about having a complex or imaginary solution uh, when we have the square root of a negative number. Well, where does it come into having just one solution? Well, that could be the case of like this, x minus 1 squared equals you know, 0. Well, in this case, you can see that my adding and subtracting to my variable is inside the parentheses. So to get inside the parentheses, I have to undo the square root first. So if I undo the square root first, well, the square root of 0 is just going to be 0. And 0 is not positive or negative, so it's just going to be 0. There is no two solutions, because 0 is not positive or negative. So there is no plus or minus. So therefore, I'm just left with x minus 1 equals 0. Add 1, add 1, x equals 1. So in this case, you can see how we can come up with one solution. In this case, we can come up with no solutions. But for the rest of them, we're going to always come up with two solutions. Just remember, if you can take the square root of a number, make sure, take the square root. If you can't. Use plus or minus. If you can simplify it, simplify it. 
and rationalize the denominator if you can. Usually that's preferred. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve a quadratic using the square root method. Thanks.